So I've been a part of this project since the very beginning and really seeing it go from just a blank, albeit very nice field, <laughs> but definitely a very blank field and just seeing, starting off in that very far corner behind me and just making a start. It's incredible just how quickly things have developed, how much it's come along. Yeah, the Dan Ron has changed massively since, well, since it was just a little idea, um, seeing the paperwork and seeing the, the empty field, um, and then not even knowing the plans to begin with, just seeing the potential. So I've been here since the day that Hugh literally showed me around what was, at that point, an empty field. And he was telling me all of these amazing ideas that he had. And to see where it is now, and to see so many of those ideas actually come into place and to be able to see them visually feels amazing. Hi, I'm Hugh Richards and I'm the boss. <laughs> well, I'd been kind of like looking for a bit of space. I was thinking like an acre, like a little parcel of land, just to be a little bit more experimental with. Hi folks and a very warm welcome back to the new project. Hello and a very warm welcome back to the Seven Acre Project. Hello and a very warm welcome back to the new growing project. So um, my first day on the job was the first day that we were working here on the site that Dan had run in. And um, it's incredible to see how far it's come since then, like just beyond belief. And sometimes it's hard to imagine what it used to look like. I try not to be a micromanager. I like to instead to make sure that people can just get on with life here and uh, whenever someone might have a question they can just ask me but yes it started off as like a, oh this could be another place where we could create content but I think it's kind of fast moved into quite a community based project involving lots of different people not just us as colleagues. Uh, the volunteer days here are really special and the last one in particular uh, was great and we planted about 60 new apple trees in a new orchard um, and also in a new linear food forest and that was really cool uh, such a good day volunteers had a brilliant time and we all had soup around the fire at the end and yeah it was just uh, just a really great atmosphere my favorite one was when we all came here and had soup around the fire that was great just pick whatever you want light a fire cook it and feed a team of people that really get they get how important and how fresh it is to work with ingredients that they themselves have grown. I've been involved in most of the building projects around Danawan and, and the structures that are here. I always love seeing how they develop over time and how they mature. The wood changes colour over the year and you can just see it fit into place a lot better. One of the hardest things for young people right now who want to start growing projects is actually finding land, access to land is usually the biggest barrier. It's, some people think it's, well, obviously finance is part of that, but it's really hard to find useful parcels of land. And so it's kind of like, it was luck that I happened to know someone through someone who had some space that they wanted a long-term lease on because they just had too much and wanted something else to happen with it. The family who owned the farm where we're working um, are really great friends and have been so supportive of this project and um, we've also got wonderful neighbours around who share knowledge about the local area and they bring us resources like grass clippings and cow manure and it just feels really good to be sort of supported by our yeah our local community here. It's been great for us as well because to be honest we don't need all the land that we've got here we didn't know that we'd end up with so many acres and the fact that Hugh's taken over half of it is, is good for both of us. I've always been quite involved with um, food, working with organic food. I was a greengrocer for a long time. I think everyone is becoming more and more aware of what we put in our bodies, what we eat, um, what, how it can be medicine, how it can be medicine just poking about in the soil as well. You know, I think everybody wins when you have a nice tomato. <laughs> After working at Dan and Ron, I learned that there's a purple tomato variety called Cherokee Purple, 
and it was a uh, quite a nice variety. So I hope to grow it this season. Um, I did try last season in my garden, but it didn't come as well as I hoped. So hopefully this is the year for Cherokee purple. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And one of my favourite little kind of almost in a way stories about this place and how it's ever changing is that the track in when you drive down you can see across the valley to Danaronin. It's really funny because for the first four or five months I had no idea on the drive down that you could see the sea. And I'd be enjoying the view and he'd be his eyes would be glued over here. Because I spent the whole time looking across at the field trying to map out what the field was going to do. And it's only when I pointed out you could see the sea that he realised you could see the sea down there. And then once I was like, oh, the sea looks nice. I was like, oh, I didn't realise you could see. That. That's how, like, kind of focused I've been on this space. Really funny because Sam told the exact same story. <laughs> <laughs> did he really? <laughs> yes, of course he did. My favourite part of working in the garden is probably looking after the chickens at the moment. Uh, they're such characters and they provide us with delicious eggs. And they're also a really great help with the composting too. I am looking forward to looking after chickens and ducks at Danaronen. I know there's already chickens here, but having more varieties of poultry and hopefully maybe some sort of four-legged creature that I'm more used to, uh, like sheep or goats uh, or, or a cow, that would be nice. So this is Figu. He is a Leon Berger, German mountain dog. Um, really good with kids, really good with livestock, really good with, uh, yeah, just keeping me company. So I think together they could be their own storybook. <laughs> the dogs of Dan are on in and... Every time you drive in, one of the dogs at least will visit you. They'll jump up onto your car and they're just running circles around you. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, little one. Hello. I think that my dog's the best, with the best name, Radio Star. But, uh, yeah, I think um, I'd like more animals to be here. I think people become nicer people when there are animals around. <laughs> John won't let me get another dog, though. He's Not yet. Too many here already. <laughs> I have plenty of dogs now, I love them, love them. Throughout my life I've done lots of working and volunteering on a whole range of farms from very sort of conventional to very small scale. Um, and the thing that's probably new working with Hugh and the team is his no-dig approach, so that's something I hadn't really experienced before. And uh, It's been uh, quite a steep learning curve for me to, to overcome that urge as a gardener to want to dig all the time. Uh, so that's been um, really interesting starting my own garden here, getting the uh, soil off to a really good start before I actually plant the vegetables. Yeah, I do gardening of my own. I've only got a very small uh, retained wall um, and we just made a garden on it. It's made me grow things that I never thought I would grow. And the potential of such a small space that I have, we can, we can make loads of food from it and it's great. And yeah, I found the right job at the right time. <laughs> Nothing really beats like learning from the land quite as much. Like, I, Hugh and I have always kind of joked that most, most producers of food have to cater for the needs of the general public and chefs and the consumer. But really, we work the other way around in that we grow whatever we can, whatever serves the land best. And then I come in last and I have to just work with it. And whatever's available right there and then, it's always in service of the land. And it's, it's a way I think more people should work. Yeah, my favourite place in the garden is probably here at the pond. I think of it as kind of like the quiet beating heart of Danaronin. Um, most of the water that we use on site comes from here and then most of the water that we use then eventually makes it back, makes its way back here as well. Um, so it's, uh, it's a really crucial part of our growing. It's also a really lovely place to just sit and, and chill out and listen to the water flowing just below. And also my dog, he really loves to swim here too. He likes to make a big splash. Um, I chose to sit here because it was the very first structure we built. Um, it was me, Charlie and Lucy. None of us had any experience in, in building a polytunnel. And so it was, a lot of things didn't exactly go to plan. And we spent probably far too long to build a polytunnel, as we none of us had ever built a polytunnel before. But we gave it a good go, and it's still standing now, and it's going lots of edge, so. Surprisingly, it's still standing, so yeah. <laughs> But overall, it was such a great learning experience being out here in the sun, working together. 
seeing the first real structure come into place. That was a real pinnacle moment, I think, for me. Uh, this little nook, as I call it, is probably one of my favourite spots of Denner on it. It was one of the very first things that I created with a wheelbarrow and a shovel and a pile of topsoil. This little donut of soil. And then uh, me and my co-worker Sierra have planted these lovely rosemary and creeping thymes. And I just like it because it's quite a central place and it's brought a lot of people together, like when we have volunteer days. Nothing beats being able to just walk around, you know, in the height of summer when this place is so green. It surprises me how after a day of filming or being out in the garden, particularly on a sunny day, you go home and you just feel so great. You feel so refreshed. I always keep with me a drone shot of the site in my car and whenever I feel like progress is slow or things aren't happening, I just look at that photo of this field and think, wow, we've done a lot in a short amount of time. Um, and that's thanks to the team and to volunteers and just all sorts of people bringing this site to life. Yeah, there's been so many changes here since I started. And I think this season, I'm really looking forward to just seeing all that coming to, into fruition and seeing the trees that we just planted come into blossom and come into leaf and just seeing it all burst into life this summer is going to be fantastic. Can't wait. Uh, this year at Danaronen I'm excited for more, just like more of everything, more vegetables, uh, more flowers, more people coming to visit the site, uh, more food to be yeah, harvested and enjoyed. I'm so excited to see this project just bring more and more people together. I'm excited for so much. I'm excited to have more days with everybody in the garden, enjoying hot drinks, chatting, getting things done, growing food. I'm excited very far down the line for the apple trees to have food on them. I can't wait to see more people enjoying this place and seeing how it progresses because this is just a small part of it. There's loads more to um, develop and uh, for everybody to understand what we're doing here and, and see it. The most exciting thing about this project is why do you have to ask such a hard question at the end? Longer distance, I can't wait for the orchard to be more developed. That's going to be amazing. In the next five years or so, that's going to be absolutely stunning. We've just planted an orchard. That's going to be great because that's cider in seven years. Um, we've got loads of you know perennials going out. Um, but I think perhaps, I think for this year, the most exciting one is one that I can't talk about because it's a top secret and it's hidden behind the larch cladding. It's just behind the camera over there. That's going to be incredible because it's really, it's a really tight project. It's got a very clear goal and it's going to be really exciting because it brings the kitchen and the gardening working incredibly closely together. Everyone will find out in spring 2024.